Hi, my name is Melvin Wei. Welcome to my YouTube channel. This is a plant growing series about growing Sweet Annie from seeds. It's an herb. The temperature range was moderate during winter, 20 to 30 Celsius. High is 86 Fahrenheit. So I started this at the end of January. There's already several seedlings in there. I use these zipper bags filled with five fistfuls of steamed sterilized soil and then after it cooled down I put it in, dumped in most of the seeds but not all of them and then used a gloved hand and just mixed and mashed in there. That would ensure that you know, there would be an even distribution, some at the top, some at the bottom, some in the middle and the variety of conditions would ensure that at least some of them would germinate. Transplanting tiny seeds like this is a very high dexterity endeavor. I could have waited until they were a little bigger, but I was very eager to do this. And I figured, you know, what's the harm in just doing some of them? So I transplanted all of the seedlings that were immediately available on the top and visible on day 24. Figuring, you know, if I put that back back on the heat mat, probably more would germinate and then I'd get more chances. Sweet Annie is pronounced Qing Hao in Chinese. It's been used since the 7th century in ancient China to cure various diseases. Most importantly, it's used to cure malaria. That's where the compound artemisinin comes from. And nowadays, in the modern era, people take the pharmaceutical isolate because many people are allergic to the plant. But it has many other uses as well. People use it for ornamentation as wreaths air freshener, they just throw some stems in the attic, you know, it's a hedge, it's deer proof. And as you can see, I just knocked over several of these seedlings that I transplanted and I had to try to write these manually. I wasn't pleased at having to do all that work all over again. But it's day 30 and as I remember, I lost a few. They dried out in just the next 48 hours. So I'm watering like this again. I figured, you know, the stuff that didn't get knocked over and survived, that was tough enough. And, you know, the stuff that I didn't knock over initially probably was going to die anyway. So don't water too deep. The roots are shallow at this stage. And I opened this bag uh, before filming just for convenience. As you can see, the soil in this bag is a little dry at the top. That's because there are so many evaporation and condensation cycles, but I've got plenty of backups in there. It's day 38, and this towel underneath the heat mat that insulates between the concrete got wet because a flood of water came out from the busted water heater. And the temperature soared, but everything seems okay, and to this very day still seems okay, so I don't think the temperature on that thermometer clock necessarily represents what's going on in this bag which is very well insulated by dirt and plastic. So as you can see there are plenty of backups in there and I can do more transplants if I want. And the soil just looks a little dry there but these are annuals. Uh, they start from very small seeds but they seem to have a very high germination rate on the bag. You know it said seven to ten days for germination although it took me 24 days to get to where I was in the beginning of this video and for these transplanted seedlings you know they're basically the same size as the first batch of germinated seedlings that came up after 24 days so it's not as fast as advertised but I found that to be the case with almost everything I order and try to grow so I'm gonna fill up some of these empty spaces here and I know since I mentioned this can get up to six feet two meters tall it's gonna be big but I figured I'd rather just take advantage of all the empty space here and have more things to look at and grow. More chances to make errors and eventually I can pull everything except for the one in the middle which is the biggest anyway. So it's day 40 and something very interesting about this plant is that the first three sets of leaves or so have different morphologies. First you have the cotyledons which are tiny mostly round, a little bit oval and boring looking. Then you have a normal looking set of standard leaves, first true leaves coming out. And then you have leaves that appear compound. They're kind of uh, wavy, you know, like teeny tiny oak leaves. And then finally you have uh, true compound leaves coming out with all these leaflets. 
So I don't know what the function is of compound leaves, but it's very interesting to see a plant that changes its leaf morphology. That wasn't the case with anything else I've ever grown except for a passion fruit vine, which in the next update I'll show you an interesting development. So water every two days, it's pretty standard. It's day 44. Growth is accelerating. They're reaching critical mass in terms of um, leaves that can photosynthesize and spur further growth. They start out very small and slow, but once they get going, they probably get going very fast because these are annuals, so they only live a year, you know. You got to grow to the size of a man or at least the height of a man in just a year. You got to go fast. So I have seedlings at various stages right now. And, you know, most of those are just backups. And I think this series is already set towards success. You've got like four obvious ones on the left side of the pot. The right side is actually reserved for another herb. Um, that's going to be another series. But I'm sharing a pot for the first time ever because I'm very low on space. So I know there's a lot of requests in the comments for me to grow various things. And I just can't grow... Uh, that many things because I li live in an apartment, I have this balcony, it's very limiting. And just doing too many things at once would require a lot of work and a lot of pots and etc. Biggest factor is I just don't have space. So it's day 46 and there was a leaf tear that happened a few days ago because I was trying to pick off a wild seed that had landed on this. You know, one of those fuzzy dandelion type seed thingies and you know, I pinched a leaf, but the tear didn't affect uh, anything at all. I mean, it didn't rot around it. It didn't really even turn brown on the, the edge of the tear. So plants are really tough compared to animals in that respect. You know, they can deal with big wounds like that. So there are four main uh, success stories here and a bunch of backup seedlings that are growing. You can see them, little dots of green in there. And the only reason those are surviving is because I'm watering a lot. The stems are kind of a reddish pink. And at this point, I thought I could keep watering and uh, not knock anything over, which is the case for some of them. But because the foliage extends so far, once the crown gets all wet, it just kind of touches onto the soil. And I don't like that. Then I have to kind of gently um, flick them to set them free from the wet dirt. Uh, if leaves contact uh, wet dirt for too long, then they they don't get burned, but they seem to sort of die at the point of contact and just brown or yellow at that point. So I like to avoid that. And I can water a little deeper now. So it was very cold during the night for all those winter nights, but now it's uh, approaching the end of winter and it's getting up to 104 Fahrenheit, 40 Celsius whatever, um, you know, on the thermometer clock, although, as I said before, I'm not sure the actual temperature is that high. So here is the Bountiful Gardens um, paper bag for the Sweet Annie Qinghao seeds. And I'm just manipulating this with one hand. It's got all the properties, instructions written on that label. So the seeds were cheap. Um, yeah, I'd definitely recommend going with them. I've tried many different vendors. Uh, but I think most of the ones, you know, species that I tried in the past that didn't germinate, you know, perhaps some of the fault was with me and the methods I used. So as you can see, they come in this little waxy paper bag, and the seeds are infinitesimal. I mean, these are the tiniest seeds I've ever seen. So a lot of these, like, weedy annual things, uh, herbs growing out in the wild, they have seeds like that. And that's why, you know, when I first got into plant growing four years ago, sometimes I'd go hiking and I'd look at uh, various things that have flowered and have shriveled up dead flowers. And I'd look for seeds, and I think most of the time the seeds were akin to being this size. So it's definitely not grower friendly in that standard sense that you know if you tried to grow maybe an orange pit or a, a honeydew seed you know that's big and visible easy to deal with mango seed or whatever although that has its own problems so the soil is actually too dry 
in this bag and in the other bags. Um, I'll talk about that when I get to those series later on. And I'm going to do some transplants to fill up the remaining space and add some water in here later. But I think, you know, we can just put it in an empty spot. We've got some real estate here at the bottom. And this is just for sort of entertainment purposes only. I don't know what to do with all those other backup seedlings. It seems like this uh, series is on track to being a solid success. So I don't need to keep them, but never say never because you never know what's going to happen. So I would just keep these around. Um, I currently have space for that bag, at least, on the heat mat. And I'll just keep watering and those... Uh, Little ones on the margins will continue to grow and serve as backups. So I added a little bit of water. The other two bags were actually drier. As I said, the bags are airtight. So it's day 50, and the biggest four are going to take over the left side of the pot, mostly the upper upper left. And you can see this one is flanked by like three or four uh, tiny little seedlings. So I think this is going to get crowded very quickly. But these things are nice in that they don't grow too vertically so far. They just keep sprouting from a very low base, a very short reddish stem. But the stems are very flimsy at this stage. And I'm looking for something much thicker and hopefully even woody so they don't just all fall over. And this middle one is the most successful one. It's got... Uh, ornate compound leaves compared to these uh, early stage seedlings. Sweet Annie is said to have a fragrance that lasts for a hundred years. That's a very powerful endorsement as an air freshener in addition to all of its medicinal uses such as being antibacterial, anti-fever, and curing digestive ailments in addition to curing malaria of a certain kind at least. So it's a very versatile herb and I'm going to post an update within a few weeks and hopefully they'll be much bigger and better looking by then. So stay tuned to my channel. If you're watching this years later, everything will be in a playlist. Thanks for watching.